What's up, YouTube? I'm Tenetri, but you can call me Ten, because this is Ten's Takes. Alright, check this out. This isn't fake. This is actually real. For the first few seconds, I could have sworn that this was actually just pre-rendered stuff. Once I looked at the video for a few seconds and noticed that these were actually real cars. This was posted to Red Bull Motorsports. This was honestly so cool. Alright, what the Reddit comments say? Seeing a race from this point of view makes it a lot more exciting. I totally agree. It gives it that total, like, third-person video game perspective. I'm impressed of the drone person, as I am the drivers. It takes a lot of skill to fly a drone like that. There's a lot of practice that goes in behind the scenes for FPV drone racing. So much so that there's actually a game that you can play called Liftoff. You can buy it on Steam for about 26 Canadian. And if you want to get into drone racing, a game like this can actually really help you. I have a few drones myself, and I was actually able to improve my game quite a bit by playing through this a little. Not sponsored, but I thought it was really cool. Who thought it was fake, right? Dispro still thinks thinks it's a PS5 game. Alright, and check out the waves under this surface ice. It's actually really cool. When you set the water quality to low to squeeze out those few extra FPS, Scar90 knows what's up. PS1 Tomb Raider graphics. It's exactly what it looked like. GTA Vice City Ocean. <laughs> yep. Latest Minecraft patch is looking pretty cool, eh? You need those new shaders. The chip shortage is affecting our simulation. <laughs> no, okay, we're moving on. And this is the only known footage to exist of the incredibly rare box jellyfish. Not really sure how you pronounce this. Let's try Google. And it doesn't look like any of these are gonna help me pronounce it here. Okay, I think we're gonna use text-to-speech. Alright, let's give it a shot. Chirodictus maculatus. Chirodictus? Maculatus. Alright, let's go with that. Chirodectus Maculatus. This thing is really cool. That's incredible. Check the wiki, and it really is that rare. Wanted to look it up because I was assuming it's super venomous, like other box jellyfish. Huh, and apparently there's no recorded cases of it stinging someone. It either failed to sting or adhere to the hand or forearm of the insatious volunteer. That's one ballsy volunteer. Who wants to get stung by the super rare and potentially poisonous box jellyfish? Put up your hand, come on! Not everybody all at once! Plus the jelly's tatted. Um, actually, excuse me, those those are clearly alien markings. And check this guy out! He makes incredible handcrafted motion-driven artwork. Just by taking the single up and down motion of a stick and he's able to animate all these creatures. It's incredible he can make all of this from hand. The independent movement of each little robot is staggering. Incredible stuff. It's really true, it takes a certain type of talent to be able to know you can do something like this. Disney about to take his idea and make a billion dollar hit? <laughs> no. Alright, you heard it here first if you see something like this in a Disney movie in the next few years. This is where they got it. Damn, that looks so cool. I bet he imagined Imagine this in his head and just went for it. It takes a really interesting type of imagination to be able to do something like that. The corn guy roasting the corn on the spit is my type of art. What? No, <laughs> they are roasting corn on a spit. Yes, the docots. Corn guy is roasting one of his own. Cornibalistic. Okay, we're moving on. The walkways at the Ohio State University were based on the paths of his students, and which ones were most commonly used. There's another group on the internet called Desire Paths, and when grass gets trampled down like this and turned into dirt, it's called a Desire Path, and the final stage of a Desire Path is when they pave it like this. It's really cool! This is a perfect example of user experience design. There's a term I haven't heard in a long time. User experience design is a design process whose sole objective is to design a system that offers a great experience to its users. There's a whole subreddit for this called Desire Paths. This is just what I was talking about. Here's a good example of one. Desire Paths are straight. This paved path that people can choose to go on. It's a lot longer than this nice path right here. Here's another good example of a desire path. Instead of walking down here and then making a right, you can just cut right between these two trees. You'd think after years of the meme being around that someone would have used two photos taken by the same angle now. Yeah, pretty much, I'm annoyed now. Fun fact from the campus, there's an abundance of gray squirrels due to the students feeding them. And they'll come right up to you and eat right out of your hand. And this is why they say Italy looks like a giant boot. Because this is what it looks like from space. It's actually pretty cool, I've seen it in maps before, but I've never actually seen it like this. Now do space from Italy. Oh gosh. I don't know what I was expecting. Awesome, you can see the curve of the Earth. Really? Oh yeah, look at that. The giant space rock we're on. So does Italy look like a boot? Or does a boot look like Italy? Oh gosh, this is a chicken and egg problem. And this is a dedicated bench for Jim. Because he's old and likes to sit. I like to imagine that Jim is actually like 25. And he has to take a break on a trail one time while hiking with his friends. So they installed a park bench just to spite him. My friends would definitely do this to me. Yep, the joys of being one month older than my best friend. I'll always be old man. What? Is that a thing? I'm seven hours older than my best friend. There have been a lot of age jokes jokes throughout the years. Seriously, is that a thing? It's just seven hours though. Finally, a bench for a living person. Alright, let's move on. Did you know that in Canada you can buy these? 
It's a bag of milk. But do you know why Canada sells bags of milk and not in cartons? Well, let's ask Google. It says here, bags require less energy to produce, generate fewer greenhouse gases than other containers. Milk bags are the most environmentally friendly milk packaging there is. And this is according to a new study by a chemistry professor. Apparently, milk bags use about 75% less plastic than milk jugs. But the bags are annoying as heck because they pile up and are not recyclable. Well, there you go. Bags of milk are there because it's more environmentally conscious. Who knew? And this massive boulder is called Karishno's Butterball. It's a massive 250 ton and 20 foot tall rock boulder. And it slits on a slippery slope less than 4 feet. On a slippery slope of a hill less than four feet base, didn't roll downhill, and it is in the position for more than 2,000 years. Say what? Okay, sorry, what? So it's just been here for about 2,000 years, and no one's managed to push it over. I still wouldn't stand under it. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a safe idea. I'm not volunteering for some Indiana Jones stuff here. The fact that it hasn't been kicked, pushed, or piped down the hill by hooligans tells me that it's probably somehow attached below the base. If this was a freestanding boulder, humanity would have ruined it by now. Interesting. Yes. Stuff in my city gets vandalized all the time. It certainly wouldn't last long here. Apparently in 1908, the governor of Madras ordered that the boulder be moved to protect the houses below. And seven elephants were unable to push it out of position. They gave up and the rock stands to this day. Seven elephants couldn't move it. That's nuts. And this is a topographical map that's updated in real time. Wow. This is actually really cool. As they push the sand around inside the sandbox, it kind of updates this topographical map. The higher points being shown in red, and the low points being shown in blue. And if it gets low enough, it actually fills it with water. It would have been so cool to see growing up. And it looks like this post is actually removed by the moderators for some reason. Earth science would have been way cooler if we had one of these. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Schools need to rent something like this for a week. That'd be so much fun. Apparently this person works for the school district and they built one for an elementary school. It cost them about $2,000 to build, but the kids had a lot of fun playing with it. And they probably learned a lot too. And this is the amount of protection used for an undersea cable. Typically undersea cables are just these few wires and they're shielded by all of this extra protective material. And Apparently they're shark proof. They're attracted to the electrical impulses inside the wire. Like how they sense prey in murky water. That is so cool. Neutrino raises a good point here. Where are the electrical impulses coming from? If it's an optical fiber cable, then there's actually no power going through it. It would just be light. And Modawan says the cable is actually DC biased to power the sea bottom repeaters. That's pretty interesting. They need to put repeaters about every 400 miles or so. These cables span for miles and they're vital to our high speed internet connection. Really cool stuff. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for this episode. Going to give a quick shout out to the Patreon supporters, One Tangy Bacon, Paul B, and Kyle French. Thank you for the support and if you want to help support too there's a link to my patreon down below let me know which one you found most interesting in the comments down below hit like subscribe and if you like this one you might also like this one as well Alrighty, again that's gonna be it for now thanks for making it all the way to the end i'll see you in the next one take care everybody